Blood Sands. This name was in the cards since my first layout of Andres Gift, really. While fleshing out its locations, I wanted to have a Pirates Den of sorts, uh, where even more CD deals would go down. Uh, but we never had time to add that, so the name got resurrected while I planned the breakdown of locations for Twin Elms. Our lead area designer, Bobby Knoll, wanted to be cautious, be constant. Upon Burial Isle, the two men meet again for the first time, though it was the last thing they did. The many-colored beast rent them both asunder. They were in death, merged, and made whole again. Cute story. Two guys meet in the belly of a soul-eating creature. Hmm. Maybe someday I'll eat two of the most insipid deer wooden lumberjacks, and they'll spend an eternity discussing beer whilst haunting my colon. As souls split into multitudes, many lives come from one. The truest of power comes from sacrificing the shard to return its strength to the mother stone. Hmm. The many lives from one sounds familiar. I was taught that sometimes between death and rebirth, a soul splits perfectly in two, creating two viable souls from one. Sounds strange, but it makes sense when you think about how the population has risen in generations. It's kind of a mathematical necessity that some process like this is happening. Each generation, the Anumfath must stand before the autumnal beast in judgment. The wise endure, passing on their strength. The weak are eaten, their souls ripped to pieces and lost for all time, removing such weakness from the cycle. Well, I guess maybe my tribe wasn't entirely wrong about my spirit form being some sort of soul terror. I suppose I was hoping to hear a different answer on the matter, but... Eyes open. Nice and quiet. Quiet. Need something? I'm here. I shall. It's done. Is not the water sacrificed unto the plant, and the plant sacrificed unto livestock, and livestock unto man? When the lesser soul is sacrificed to strengthen the greater soul, the whole of our family grows stronger. I suppose I get the argument. We all have to kill and eat, constantly for that matter, to live. This sounds like it's talking about the Blood Sands rituals. I wonder how, or even if, this is relevant to me.
At this area, I wanted to convey a sense of a bygone ground. Under an advanced civilization crumbled into pieces and a feeling of foreboding as you approach the top of the island. So where Wurika's temple of nutrition, uh, Brave Yaman, opens its mystical fog to the world outside. Yeah? I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Yes? Need something? One of our talented environment artists, Sam Dunning. Yeah. How may I help? Terrific. Job in bringing this week. I'm here. We lay out life into this beautiful scene. I want to call him. How may I help? How may I help? God's yeah. way up. Yeah. What? Ready. See you. Yeah. 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 Oh, no. Even better. How may I help? Here I became Damn. a domain of Wurika. Damn. Will you mm -hmm. use the map? Yeah. Massive stats. Most of our herds were shadowed the end game. Only boss. This was at CC. similar to the ancient Greek myth of crossing the river Styx with Caron. So, in addition to all the concerns, we got rid of the requirement to obtain the Anamenthas permission to access Perla. All right, then. All right, then. How may I help? Need something? Would he feel that sound? Hmm? This thing. 
Hey. Listen. I'm ready. Doing? Yes. The job. How bad? of your skull. I am Heravius, child of the Fisher Crane, adept of the Hawk and Ivy. Wanderer of Aretha. Too formal? Excellent. I endured Galloway's trial and vanquished my equal. The only thing I regret now are the years I wasted viewing this whole thing as a curse. The ostracism was, no doubt, just another way of Galloway forcing me to be stronger. Almost. We thank thee, Galloway, for guiding our hunt. For today we grow strong off the flesh of the weaker. I think we're done here. Before the vultures get to him. Figured I should take a reminder. <laughs> 